everybody. It is whoa, Jason. It's almost November. It's yep. nearly it's nearly spooky week. <laughs> um, I'm Joel, and I'm I. I'll more about that later. But I'm Joel. I'm just Joel. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Jason. Hey, what's going on? Mistakes were made, Jason. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I don't think so. I think we're all right. Well, I'm I'm just the prince now of board uh, games. That's lame. That's, yeah, that's, that's not even nice. worth mentioning on the podcast. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's just leave it. Let's just let, keep people wondering what happened there. Pr- pretty seriously demoted. <laughs> is a prince lower than the archduke though uh, yeah i mean in cardboard yeah it is <laughs> all right <laughs> fair enough the, well the other one too i mean this week's been kind of hard on me jason because i i actually finished board games this week so uh. <laughs> i'm i'm all done i'm all out of board games to lessen so can't get here soon enough yeah. which i guess it's going on during this show right now technically that, that's true it is we are doing nothing preview wise because you know what? Once more than one percent of our listeners are from Europe, we'll do a preview. But until then, all right, Jason. Well, I have zero banter and I, no transition in me either, Jason. So, yeah, I got nothing. Just crank the music box, play the bumper. <laughs> All right, so. I have a couple pieces of news I wanted to talk about. Um, the first game I want to talk about is called The Towers of Arcanos or Arcanos. I'm not really sure how to say that word, but it's by Creative Game Studios. And essentially what this is, is it's a dice drafting game where you're taking a die based on some criteria on this little tile and you're putting a die on a certain space and you're trying to build this tower up as high as you can get it. And you're sending like these little wizard meeples that you have over to the tile when you take your die and you're trying to have an area majority. It's a simple game, but it's really interesting and I'm a sucker for dice placement. So Arcanos, the Towers of Arcanus is definitely one that I'm interested in and may end up checking out. All right. And from a really nice, beautiful game, we're going to go to a game about making your way through a dungeon so you can be the first one to the crapper. And it is called Dungeon WC by Dracomaka Games. So this is a real-time cooperative game where players are working together to build this dungeon so they can get all of their characters through the dungeon to the bathroom because they really have to go. Like, I don't even know if there's more to the game than that, but that premise is hilarious. I love it. The WC, I mean, that's a British thing, right? For like water closet? Is that where that comes from? Yeah, I, guess? I think so. I have no idea what it means. I was looking for it and I couldn't figure it out, but that could be. Yeah. It is in pounds, I believe, the price, but maybe not. Yeah. Cool, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess the only thing I want to say that he's coming to Kickstarter that looks pretty cool is um, the uh, welcome to Halloween. Dot com, I think is where you can go to get updates about the upcoming uh, Kickstarter from Deep Water Games. Right, I think is the company that does uh, does Welcome to. They've got a little like kind of expansion coming out. I'm gonna have a video up on that too. Hopefully, maybe it's up by now. Um, they've got just a different sheet and a slightly different rule set that uses the same cards. And then uh, and then I don't know. It looks like there's some just other real cryptic right now about it. But there's some other little extras in there and stuff. So. I don't know. Uh, pretty cool game though. I really do like Welcome Too. It's uh, it's a great game. So, any anything that gets it more gameplay and and gets that whole uh, roll and right or flip a card and right or whatever that one is, uh, more action. Pretty cool. I like it. Yeah, the new um, like pad that you're writing things on looks pretty pretty cool and neat. So, I haven't played any of that game. So maybe this will be my chance to finally play some of it. Oh yeah, it's it's really good, man. I. I think we'll have to play this at uh, at the con. Do you have Welcome To? Yep, I sure do. Oh, okay. I didn't realize you had it. I thought you just, a friend had it. No, I, I picked it up. I had it pre-ordered from my local shop because um, I thought, hey, that's a home run for my wife. And it it was, she said, eh, that's fine. So that to me is a home run. <laughs> right. <laughs> she didn't hate it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so that's that. Yeah. So. Arcanos, we'll be doing a review for that too. I think I'm 
I'm going to be doing that one. So you can check that out sometime soon. Awesome. I'm excited for that, too. Uh, I have one more piece of news if you don't have anything else. No, go for it. It's not really news. I just wanted to gripe on uh, Fantasy Flight for a little bit. Uh, there are some content creators. I'm not going to mention the names because I don't want to start like Flame Wars or whatever. But Fantasy Flight's like bringing down the hammer. And they're saying that you they can't talk about any of their a certain type of their game because of licensing rights. And they've taken away like all the support that they were giving them. And it's just becoming like a big ordeal. So I just wanted to let everybody know that if you like Fantasy Flight games, you may definitely want to just make sure you really want to support them if you want to support them because they're not the most friendly to content providers and others. So just a little PSA. I'm trying to think what FFG games I own right now. There are some. I, I like FFG. It's a game company, I guess. Yeah, I think I only have I have like two. I don't I don't really like a bunch of their games, so it doesn't really affect me a ton, but I know a lot of people do like their games, so Well and I mean I don't know the whole story or any of the story hardly at all, but I guess um I don't know. Uh I I think uh for me the other side of the story could be that their licenses sometimes with having properties they own licenses for and having, you know, like universes that they lease things through to, to make the games, there could be something with that. I mean, I don't know, but I mean, it might be that they don't necessarily not want content creators to provide, you know, content and reviews and, and give them, uh, you know, feedback and stuff, but it could be that their license is so limited. Maybe they can't let people do that. I don't know. So I don't know. I mean, like I, I reserve judgments cause I don't know anything. And that's, I guess, my trying to be neutral on this, but I don't know. So, whatever. Yeah, I don't like them enough to really care. So, I don't, I'll be the non neutral party here. So, I just wanted to mention it. <laughs> you don't, you don't like content creators enough to care? <laughs> no. Is that what you just said? <laughs> well, I did say that, but I meant fantasy flight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, J- I, I Jason- do like content creators, <laughs> content creators are cool. Jason, I, Joel, and you, Jason, <laughs> distinct voices. Jason, um, that's great, man. I, I'm, I'm glad you have an opinion on this. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just tough. So, anyway, um, yeah, I, I mean, crap happens or whatever. So, I it, don't know. It does. It does. It'll be fine. It'll blow over. But yeah, it just kind of cheesed me off. So I wanted to talk about it. Oh, hey, J- <laughs> Dinosaur <laughs> Island. Back from extinction update. Just coming across my desk here. I want to make sure we get this covered. <laughs> All right. Uh, it looks like November 7th. Uh, they're going to need to have the addresses in there by November 7th because uh, they're starting to have, have some games arrive in ports in early November. So uh, so anyway. Um, nice. I'm in. Looks like uh, maybe we're going to see this one yet in 2018 here. So good news, guys. Uh, that's that's all. Um, really, the Gugong update should be more important. But oh yeah, oh yeah, that I, game is flipping amazing. Well, I think we're going to be seeing that one real soon too, from what I understand. So excited about it for sure. Yep, me too. Well, cool, Jason. Uh, that's been it for this week's uh, episode of not board game mechanics, but this podcast within this podcast of. What's happening with Dinosaur Island back in extinction? <laughs> yeah, we haven't done one of those for a while. <laughs> the other podcast was in the podcast of Blue Jackets Talk. Uh, we haven't had an episode of that yet. We're going to have to fire one of those up in the next few weeks. If you don't know who the Blue Jackets are, because you're from like Australia, <laughs> I don't know. Look up the Columbus Blue Jackets. Yeah, don't worry about looking them up right now. They're kind of hot garbage. Ah, uh, they're like I think three and two, which isn't horrible. Maybe three and three. Okay, they're they're not great. Yeah, but we'll see what they're happens. They're yeah. a young team. They'll 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 snap together. That's true. That is true. All right, that's it for this week's Blue Jacket <laughs> update. <laughs> By the way, we're really petitioning pretty hard to be the unofficial board games podcast of the Columbus Blue Jackets. So I don't know if you have to petition to be the unofficial. Um, but I, you know what? I'm just going to call it. We are the unofficial board games podcast of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, there, I said it, Jason. We both have a hot take this week. Yep. So, yeah. So now all we got to do is just get this to their ears. So maybe they'll make it the official unofficial podcast of the Blue, <laughs> the Blue Jackets. Let's hope, man. <laughs> so. 
so I'm going to talk about a couple games that I played this week. And the first one that I I played that I was excited to play is Dungeon Pets by Vlada Shavathel, however you say his name, and published by CGE. And I've been wanting to play this game for a long time because I thought the the idea that your animals poop in the cage and you have to clean it up, that was hilarious to me. But the game's not really as hilarious as that. It takes a whole lot of explaining for a really kind of simple game. Like, I think we spent 45 minutes explaining it and maybe 45 minutes playing it. So, yeah. should It shouldn't have that many rules for what it is. But essentially what you're doing is you're you're bidding for actions to go around on this little board to, like, buy cages, buy pets, put them in. And then you're using those pets and you're going to try to meet their needs by playing these cards. And the pets are going to get to a certain size and then you can sell them to the market. And then they Or if they get too old and no one buys them, they go off to the farm and then random meat shows up on the board. And it's a fun game. It's it's just essentially worker placement with some bidding and the cool like hero clicks type little egg guys. So yeah. I definitely want to play it again. It was a fun game, and now that I know how to play it, I won't have to drudge through the the learning of it. This is one that, for the cuteness of the font on the box and the cute little animals on it and stuff, is like fairly dark and fairly heavy for what we actually do in the game. So I don't know. Like, hey, this animal's too too old to be in my pet store basically so let's send them off and feed them to the other pets um <laughs> yeah, i don't know pretty sure. pretty weird but it really is not a simple light game i mean i don't know it's it's got some stuff in it man it's it's not heavy by any means but it's squarely medium i would say yeah i think if if it would be broken down into phases like dinosaur island is because dinosaur island like i've said a bunch of times is a medium game that teaches like a heavy game and this one kind of does the same thing but it's hard to teach because you're kind of teaching all of it at the same time like there's no way to just say hey this is the first part because it kind of all goes together and you need to understand it all before you can start talking about how you win and all that so yeah it's just it's hard to get a grasp on how to teach it but i think outside of that yeah it's a pretty medium weight game yeah it's uh it's pretty cool man for sure well jason this week, I think we have to talk about it. I think we have to talk about Coimbra. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I played this one with my son. Um, I've, only, I've only played it at two players, so I don't know how it scales up very well yet, so I can't give a full judgment on it, but I can't imagine it doesn't scale well. It's better, um, I think, it's better at more, actually. I was going to say probably. I, th- I was thinking that probably, honestly. But it's it's perfectly great at two. Um, it's something that I would be eager to play again, and I think if I was asked to play this at any time, I would play it like no no reservations anytime. Um, and I would probably request this one a fair number of times to play. I I don't uh, I think I've got it rated at a ten right now. So I my board game ratings. It's been a while since I talked about this. I actually stole this from a guy that's in like this club I'm in. Like you don't need as many ratings as they give you on Board Game Geek. So like a ten is like anytime anywhere. Eight is like most anytime anywhere. And like I definitely will give this one owning this one some strong consideration. A six is like I'm happy to play your copy when you ask me. A four is you can convince me, and a two is like no way. And this one's between an eight and a ten. So if there's some way to like rate something between an eight and a 10 that'd be really useful but there isn't because there's only eights and tens so nothing between those two numbers will (laughs) will work yeah no odd numbers here nope no odd numbers so it's a it's a eight plus uh or a 10 minus one of the two (laughs) i'm not sure i'm more plays will reveal it but i really love this one uh and you were the one that turned me on to this and i know you guys were pretty hyped to have this and play it so this one doesn't have to count on your list of stuff you played but like what are your thoughts on this game it's somewhere between my one and 100 on my list and it's it's it might be higher to the closer to the one or it might be closer to the 100 but I actually really love this game. Like I want to play it right now. I forgot about it until you started talking about it, and now I want to go play it. <laughs> I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. I mean, I think it's I don't know. It's just cool how everything resolves, and so you never know how that castle row is going to resolve. So like basically, you roll these die or you draft these die. You put them in these little holders, and then you place them on these different rows for drafting, and then your cards basically build a, an engine for you. So it's kind of a cool way to build an engine. Um, I don't know. I know you don't like it, but it feels like super streamlined Lorenzo kind of, I don't know, but like it's, it's, uh, there's diff, there's way different. They're way different games, honestly, but I don't know. Just the, the using your dice to buy cards kind of thing, I think is where I'm getting the comparison from, 
But um, it's just, it's cool, man. And like the other thing too that's weird about it is you have to play it a few times to really be able to catch like what all your cards do. And so I had this awesome engine of like getting just tons of stuff on all the tracks and getting to move my guy like crazy on the sideboard. And I got smoked because my son was like, you didn't get any in-game scoring cards. So like I just beat you (laughs) by a ton. So I mean, you have to balance it really well too. It's just, it's a really cool game. The thing that I really like is the dice serve two purposes. So at the beginning, you need color and pips, but later on, it's only the color that matters. So you're trying to think about both halves of the game at the same time, which gives it a lot of like depth and thinkiness. So you're like, I really want that orange card, but I don't care about my orange track because I haven't really been focusing on that. So yeah, it's it's a nice give and take there of how the dice are used. Right, because the color of the die like totally matters as you start getting some of those workers that are like if you didn't take any purples this round get two movement you know (laughs) what i mean like yeah stuff like that so there's like a really good purple number but you're like i don't know if i want to draft a purple and lose that ability you know i mean those kinds of things so pretty cool yeah i'm not going to talk about the score the last time i played because it was bad like i think katie almost lapped everybody it was nuts she does that sometimes yeah it it was nuts but i still liked it it's all about the the journey not so much the the arrival at the end i like the journey that's fun yeah what else you play jason all right so i didn't really play a ton of games this weekend but i'll so i'll talk about some games that i just haven't talked about before and i did a review for this one it's called tanks but no thanks by 10 robot games this is essentially um I, i don't know it's like chess meets like i don't know uh a battling game kind of. So you have these little tanks and you're rolling the dice and you're going to move your tanks either in any direction that you want that many numbers. So if I roll a six, I can move any combination of my tanks up to six. So I can move all five tanks, one, I can move one tank, six, whatever. And then if you, or on your turn, you can decide that you want to attack somebody that's in range and you're trying to either eliminate all the other players, tanks or all three of their bases. And if you can do that, you win, or you may be able to meet your secret mission card that lets you win a different way. And everybody has their own secret mission card. So maybe I just have to get all five of my tanks over in your color of the board. And if I can do that, I win. So it's kind of an interesting game. It's not a game that I particularly love. Like it's not my style of game, but I can see where people would really enjoy it and have fun playing it. So that is tanks, but no thanks. That's definitely not your kind of game, but the fact that you're as kind to it as you are means it must be really good for people who do like those kinds of games. Yeah, I mean, it was a good game. And I I mean, just because I don't like it doesn't mean I have to rail on it. So, I mean, I know it's not for me, but I can see why people would dig it. So, yeah, it, it's a fun game. Yeah, for sure. Um, I want to talk about Lisboa still, but I'm not going to yet. But we're getting closer. Jason <laughs> got, got, got Lisboa in his realm. Yep. He's ready to play it, just hasn't played it yet. So next week, I promise, we'll talk about Lisboa. Actually, let's do... Uh, oh, man, I want to... Never mind. I was going to say, let's put Lisboa in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I, I mean, like, it's going to be a Hall of Fame game. It probably will be, yeah. yeah. But I don't know. Not yet. Let's let's give it a few more plays, I guess. I think I think the other rule to it, we never said, really, but we thought, was a game should be at least five years old to go in the Hall of Fame. Kind of like how King Griffey Jr. had to wait those five years to get in the Hall, you know? So <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Even though he's amazing. Yep. And and the, you know what's weird? He played for the Reds long enough that like I sort of sort of think of him as a Cincinnati Red, which is absurd. Oh but, yeah. You know? I, I saw him play for the Reds a ton. It was awesome. Yeah, he was actually pretty good for the Reds too. But anyway, uh my final game I want to talk about. Uh okay, so there's there's what do all these games have in common, Jason? Uh Shakespeare, Voyages of Marco Polo, Polo, Pola. That was a <laughs> and and Concordia. What do those have in common? Uh, they have ugly box covers. Yeah, that's true. But <laughs> I don't all know. three of those all three of those games are games that when I try and remember why they're awesome, I can't. Uh, but then when yeah. I play them, I'm like, oh my gosh, these games are so good. So I mean, Marco Polo is easier to explain why it's so awesome. But Shakespeare, I can't explain why it's awesome. And Concordia, I can't really explain why it's awesome but i'm gonna try right now so concordia oh man it's so good i think it's so good because basically you take your seven cards and one of them's a duplicate and you say here's how you play this game this card does this this card does this this card does this and this card does this also they score points for these things 
There's more cards out there like them. Go get them. Make your deck better. Make things stronger. Produce stuff. Get all kinds of points. The game's over before you know it. It's really quick, really <laughs> fast, really gratifying. I mean, it's just such a good game. Right. Love it. Absolutely love it. I haven't played Concordia, but I did play Transatlantic, and it has the same thing. You have eight cards. Seven of them are the same, are different. One of them is let you pick all the other ones up. And yeah, you buy better cards of those versions and then trying to just get the best boats that you can get. So I like the mechanism, so I can't wait to buy, try Concordia for sure. Yeah, I mean, Matt Gertz, I think that's his mechanism, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. That and Rondell's, I think. I'm, I'm not positive, but I think that's kind of his are his big things. So, Did you actually well, see that at Essen they're releasing Concordia Venus? Yes, it's a standalone though, I think, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a standalone. You can buy it as a standalone or you can buy it as an expansion. I don't know how that works, but I guess it's a standalone or an expansion if you already had the regular game. Huh. So maybe you don't get cards with it? I don't know. But I'll tell you this. I enjoyed Concordia so much last time I played it. I enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to enjoy it because I don't remember it as well as it really is or as good as it really is. Um, but I think this one's going to go up my rankings on my top 100 after my last play. And I actually went and bought card sleeves like immediately because I was like, these cards are trash quality, so I need to put them in sleeves. Yeah. And so I don't sleeve anything because usually like card games for sure, the sleeves are almost as much as the game itself. So I'm like, I'm could just buy another copy of the game if I wear it out. So I don't know, like instead of sleeving it. So, and I don't like the way sleeves feel. So on this one though, I actually sleeved it up. I got some decent sleeves. I got them from uh, board game sleeves, um, which are actually pretty cheap, but pretty good sleeves. So anyway, Concordia is what I played. I really did enjoy it. It's really a lot of fun. Um, I don't know which game I'd want to play with you more that you haven't played yet. Brass or Concordia. They're both so good. Um, I'd rather play Brass. You'll, you'll love Brass. I'm positive. I played Transatlantic, so now I'm not as interested to play um, Concordia, but I do definitely want to play Brass for sure. <laughs> well, I the thing about Brass, Jason, I'm just going to get this fight off off right now, off the air, uh, or on air, we'll just get this fight done so people can be witnesses to it. I want to play the new edition because I think it looks awesome. And you're going to be like, no, we're going to play the old edition. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't care. I'm going to bring the old edition home with me so we can play the new one. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Um, man, I'm excited. We're going to actually, Jason and I are going to be face to face playing some board games about a week after you guys hear this. So, um, that's always cool. We always have some good stuff to say after that. Um, I think, I think we're going to try and get a little Katie and Jed in the mix. We'll see what happens there. <laughs> oh, man. If only we could live stream some Jed, that would be awesome. Oh, uh, man. At some point, we need to. Like, honestly, I think that weekend is extra life and I would love for us to stream it, but. I don't know that that's going to work out, but man, that'd be awesome if we could raise some money for some charities. Maybe maybe 2019 we'll do uh, Extra Life. Yeah, so, sounds good. Anyway. All right, man. Well, that's what I played. That's what I played, so uh, I think we can move on. Is that our new like sign-off transition from there? That's what I played, and then you go, that's what I played? Because it's pretty awesome. It is awesome. I dig it. <laughs> all right, all right. So it goes like this. It goes, well, that's what I played. And that's what I played. That's how our bumper goes, right? Sort of, yeah. <laughs> Jason, I got a chance to talk with uh, with an up and coming designer um, from Plat Hat Games, and um, his game Guardians is a really cool game. I got a chance to play this a couple of times before the interview. It's basically nothing you'd like, but it's good. So <laughs> it's it's a combating kind of card game. You might like it because you did like magic, but it's basically you're trying to control these points. Think of think of it as gamer smash up. Is kind yeah, of what it is. That's cool. Um, and I think this one's going to follow maybe the LCG format of um, us having some some expansion packs come out pretty frequently. I'm wondering, there's another one too, uh, another way that we can we can maybe expand this game where the current heroes get more cards put in there. I actually did ask Callan about that, and and so you're gonna have to listen to hear about that. But anyway, um, without any other blathering by me, let's listen to this interview. All right, I am here with Colin Flores uh, from. I guess I guess I'm going to say you're from Plaid Hat because that's where you're published at for this first game. Oh, well, I, I'm also officially an employee of Plaid Hat too. So, are, are you? Yes, that's yes, pretty yes. cool. 
So how did you end up at Plat Hat? Uh, well, my, my title here is uh, communications manager. Um, I actually uh, got introduced to the studio uh, a few years back. I picked up Summoner Wars. I thought it was an awesome game. Um, it, that was always kind of in rotation, Dead of Winter as well. But uh, my friends and I really got into Ash's Rise of the Phoenix Born, which is one of our expandable card games. Uh, it's designed by Isaac Vega. So it's one of those games, it's kind of like an LCG where, you know, you buy decks and you add to your collection right. and you, you change up your deck and have different strategies and stuff. And we kind of got, the dice. Yes, the, cool game. the dice manipulation and management's really cool. Uh, so my friends and I started a podcast actually about Ashes called The Main Action that we did for a little bit. And it just so happened that we were based in Dallas and Plat Hat was based in Dallas. And so Isaac Vega, the designer, he reached out to us and he was like, hey, you know, I really enjoy the show. Thanks so much for doing it. You know, I'd love to be on it. Uh, we interviewed him a few times. We went to a couple of events with him and that led to, you know, there were some opportunities to demo and, you know, volunteer for Plaid Hat, which I took. And that just led to me kind of hanging out at the studio more. And then eventually there was a, a position open that Colby, the studio manager, uh, the designer of uh, Summoner Wars, uh, he started the studio uh, and, you know, by, my position became available and he thought that I'd be a good fit for it. So he put my name up and I interviewed with F2Z, which is our parent company at the time. And they approved me. So I've been with Plaid Hat ever since. Oh, super cool. Plaid Hat is definitely, I would say, even notorious for being just great with the community. Um, like their playtesting efforts, like people love playtesting for you guys. And you are so good at engaging the community. So yeah, Colby likes to joke that he always wants to hire like the fanboys to do, you know, different jobs for the studio because that's, uh, I don't know if you know, but that's kind of like how he got his start in gaming. Um, him and, and Jerry Hawthorne, one of the designers that you know, is employed by the studio and also one of our graphic designers, uh, Dave Richards, uh, they all met each other, uh, through Heroescape, which was a, a Hasbro game that I'm sure yeah, you yeah. yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah. you know, th that had a very, very active community and that's kind of where they all met each other. And that actually led to, uh, you know, Colby doing some development work for Heroescape and designing some of the units in the game and then also working on other projects for Hasbro, you know, and that's how him and Jerry know each other. Yeah, very good. I, I, uh, I too was a fanboy of Summoner Wars, and I think I own every card that ever came out for that game. And then I definitely was like, I bought Ashes at like the Gen Con it came out at, and oh, had right Isaac sign my box and everything. So I thought that was a pretty great game too. Um, and then I actually was a playtester on Dead of Winter, so that was pretty fun. Oh, cool, um, cool. And and got that like you know bragging rights of having my name in the credits kind of thing, which is you know nothing but fun. <laughs> um, so very cool. Uh, so. So then you uh, you basically have been a fan of the games for a long time. And so did you feel like, man, I've got one inside me here? Or how did this game start coming around? Uh, the game is Guardians. Um, is this your this is your first published My game, very first then, game, right? yes. Oh, very cool. How did this start? Like, when did you start it? And how did it start? I So I for a couple of years now, I've kind of been obsessed with the concept of like trying to make a shuffle building game that had a dueling card game feel to it. Like, I really enjoy games like Smash Up and Wiz War and stuff like that. But I always thought that maybe there could be a head to head like dueling card game with that kind of mechanic. So I threw out like 30 different versions of it over the last couple of years, just trying to like get something to work. Uh, you know, different themes, different mechanics, different, uh, you know, types of decks. Uh, and I was really inspired by a, a video game called Overwatch, which I'm sure a lot of people can see oh, the yeah, inspiration absolutely. of in the game. Like, it, it's very much like a love letter to Overwatch. Uh, but I, was, I, I got really into Overwatch uh, about two years back uh, or a year and a half or so. And I, I really enjoyed the game and I thought there were some cool mechanics. And there was actually like one of the concepts in Overwatch is that you have to stand next to this the payload which is like a moving target right. and the, the more people that are standing on it the faster it goes and that's your that's your goal in the game is trying to get it from point a to point b and i started thinking about maybe like a way to abstract that in a card game and that's where in guardians i came up with the idea of like there's basically a tug of war system in place where if you have more people at a location then you can move the token to your side of the field but if there's even one enemy there then they'll they'll stop it from moving because they're kind of disrupting right. the plans so right no that's once that clicked in the space, like sure. the, the game kind of formed around it in a very, very quick way. Yeah, no, I definitely, I mean, uh, when I first played this with my son, he and I play Overwatch together as well. And we were drafting our heroes. He's like, which one's, which one's Bastion? That's what I want. Cause that's easy mode, you know? So, or whatever it was kind of his joke he made, but <laughs> it definitely, I mean, it feels, it feels like, um, you know, a lot like Overwatch. Uh, I, I do. I mean, just, I do love that game. And this definitely, I think the, term love letter that he used there was just a perfect way to put it i feel like this totally honors overwatch it doesn't try and rip it off um and it does feel like 
the only thing it has in common with it is kind of the theme and the characters look vaguely similar at times. Um, but I mean, just a very cool game that you've come up with here. So how long ago did you start developing this? Uh, this particular iteration, I think like probably a year and a half or so, like very close to when I actually got into Overwatch. I was like, oh, this is such a cool concept. You know, these, it, it, I think Overwatch also like shares a lot of DNA with like current like Marvel superheroes in a lot of way. And I, I've always wanted to do something where I could like make my own like superhero like pantheon. So like that, like Overwatch and Marvel were like you know, the the movies that are out now are like two huge inspirations for this. So uh, about a year and a half ago, you know, we, I started like getting the concept together and, uh, you know, making my prototype and refining everything. And then uh, just before Gen Con last year, I showed it to Colby uh, because he, we were actually discussing like, the possibility of doing a different superhero game. And um, we had a game that we were developing at the time that had a different theme. And Colby was like, you know, do you guys think that we can make this a superhero game? And we were all, we all didn't think that was a good fit for it, but our graphic designer was like, well, you know, Colin's been working on a superhero game. Maybe that'd be a good fit. So I brought it in, I showed it to him and he, he started developing and working on it and he showed it to asthma day and they, they approved it. And so we started moving forward on it. And so I had like a working prototype with everything pretty much finalized and ready for playtesting at Gen Con last year. And then Gen Con this year, we actually had early copies shipped in. So the turnaround was about one year to get everything ready and like, you know, r- rush through to get copies ready for Gen Con. Yeah. I mean, that's a really quick turnaround I and mean, that's pretty amazing, honestly. Yeah, it was, it's a dream come true. And like, it, it was so surreal to have like showing it to friends of mine that I only get to see at Gen Con last year where it's all like, when I make a prototype, it's usually an InDesign. And so it's just like white backgrounds and black lettering and black lines and text boxes and barely any art because I'm just trying to make sure that like, the mechanics work. And going from that to like the fully finished product, like in a year was just so awesome. So Guardians, I do have a review up on YouTube of this. Uh, so if you follow uh, our YouTube channel, check that out. I think you can get a real rough idea of how the game works, but a really cool game where you, I think the term you used was shuffle, shuffle building, which is what they say about Smash Up as well. Mm-hmm. I kind of hate the comparison to Smash Up, truthfully. I, I'm getting it a lot. I, I don't, I don't want to like, uh, I, I have a lot of respect for Smash Up and I know that like, uh, Sometimes is it, it's a great introduction to the hobby, but I totally get how a lot of gamers kind of outgrow it because I think it is meant to be very much like an introductory style game and definitely can like get you into the hobby. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I know a lot of people like they see, oh, you combine cards and they see you fight over locations. So they're like, OK, this is like nerds smash up. OK, I get that. But I think there's a, yeah. a little bit, it's, it's very different. Well, in my review, I call it gamer smash up. I mean, it definitely is three steps up the notch notches of like how just it works really well. It's an evolution of smash up for sure. I think for to compare this game to smash up, like to make the, like the, the uh, analogy from the SAT, it would be like, uh, like smash up is the guardians as munchkin is to descent or something. I don't know. <laughs> like that's kind of how it feels. Right. To me. Like you've, you've taken that smash up idea and you've made it just really a cool game. Um, and I, I don't have, I mean, I own smash up. I still have it in my collection. No oh, yeah, disrespect. For sure, for sure. It. Yeah. When I first played it, I, so I, I've talked on other shows about the idea of like, uh, there's ownership when you, when you make a deck of cards and anything, like if you make a magic deck, if you make a, uh, you know, Netrunner or ashes deck, you're like, I I've made this thing. And even if somebody else has the exact same deck list, even if you went online and grabbed that exact same deck list, like, I think there's, this cool ritual of like putting it together. I'm like, this is my, right. deck. this is what I'm choosing to, you know, represent myself in this competition that we're about to have, you know? And I think that smash up gets to that really quick and it's not, it's not intimidating at all. You can just tell somebody like, Hey, pick two of these factions and put them together, whichever one you think sounds cool, that can be your deck. And so that was a huge inspiration for guardians where I wanted people to feel like they have ownership of this deck, but they got to pick a team of three heroes where they were like, these are my three guys. These are who I'm going into the fight with. And who I'm going to try and make work. And so I I hope that comes across. I I think we're best friends because in my (laughs) review, I said, the thing I loved about it is I love customizing card games, but I hate spending 50 hours for every hour I play looking through thousands of cards, trying to figure the exact right ones out. It's tough. tough. As you get older, it's hard to like find the time to be like, let me lay out all my toys on the ground and then go through every single card. Like ashes is probably the last game that I did that with. And I think that it probably will be the last game that I have that kind of experience, but like the next card game that I'm super excited about is Keyforge, which is kind of like right. the exact opposite, like no building at all. Right. Uh, another thing that I really wanted to make work in Guardians is that uh, you know I, I I've delved very deeply into LCGs and ECGs and all the other 
card game, you know, acronyms. Uh, one thing that I love about this game is, is like when you get somebody new into them, you're like, hey, you know, we're on the same, you know, playing field. You go buy the cards. I go buy the cards. We play together. It's awesome. But I definitely noticed that like, it became harder to convince friends of mine. So like, Hey, it's time to buy, you know, some more core sets and some more expansions for you to get into this game. So one cool thing about guardians is that it, because you're drafting your team from a shared pool, uh, as long as one player has, you know, a fan of guardians and has taken the time to like collect their, you know, collection, you have the full two player experience. Right. So like, you don't have to worry about your friend buying every single expansion and being like, okay, I have everything too. And now we're on even footing. You know, cool thing is that you can just, draft from your own pool and everybody's got a a fair chance at, you know, putting a team together. So the crazy thing too, with this game, Colin, is that each of these heroes has a a really minimal sized deck, but they Mm. have personality. Like my favorite character is Valkyrie in this. Um, I just think she's cool. (laughs) I like the way she plays. Um, So, I mean, it's really neat that there's personality that does come through in these minimal cards that you just are shuffling together. Who, who's your favorite character? Oh, this is a tough one. Um, I think, Story rise, uh, Kosi is probably my favorite character because I think that, you know, she's a, a very powerful female presence and like she's a very skilled warrior. Uh, mechanically, like my jam has been Ronin lately because I've even like having played the game as much as I have, like, you know, getting to play against more players now that it's in the wild. I'm just finding more combos with that character that I, I'm, I'm very excited to, to exploit and play with. Yeah. But I mean, there's also some really cool characters coming up in expansions, too, that I'm very excited about. So well, I'm very excited to see how people respond to them. Ro- Ronan's got that power where he gets plus two attack for every opponent he's going against. Mm-hmm. And that just is a killer thing because I like part of my strategy is I like to stack heroes on a spot to try and score like the higher point ones. And then, you know, like Ronan kills that strategy, you know? So, I mean, just, I don't know. It's just a really cool way how he plays as well. I, I do enjoy him quite a bit. So you, you mentioned expansions. Uh, we can mm-hmm. look for more heroes coming out, but I wondered about this. Are you, is there a possibility you would ever expand the current characters and give them like extra abilities that you could put in and out? Yeah, we, we, I've uh, discussed it with a couple of friends of mine, you know, we, we just spitball ideas every now and again. And then here in the studio, um, I think that, uh, so we wanted to make the system as uh, well, when, when you translate games, there's like a process they use that you can only have so much text in a spot. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to make sure that like, we, we minimize the text that identified which set uh, a card belonged to. I know this is like kind of techie or whatever, but, uh, so that's why when you do the cards, like it's only a picture of the character in the corner. So we've discussed the idea of like having other cards that just have that same picture, but that can go into that kit or the idea of like, and this is, you know, a comic books are a huge inspiration for this game. And I, I love the idea of like, you know, different versions of characters. Like I think that mm-hmm. legendary does a really good job of this. Like they'll have a Wolverine that's, you know, from the X-Men block and then they'll have a Wolverine that's X-Force and then they'll have old man Logan or something like that. Yeah. So I was, I was saying, I, I would love the idea of like, you know, heroes in the base game, but like older versions of them that have like, you know, different abilities because this is different points in their lives and stuff like that. And then the idea of like, you know, they play alongside other versions of themselves or, you know, against other versions of themselves, all, all, all the comic book tropes. I think the game is really ripe for <laughs> Yeah, no, that, definitely. Uh, did you play Sentinels of the Multiverse ever in your in your? I did, I did. I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I um, well, I didn't. We didn't really go past the the, the base game because we just uh, hadn't collected more yeah. of it. But we had like the the updated version here in the office, and that was like a huge like inspiration for trying to make sure that every character was like. Like when you when you play a character in that game, I, I I do love that it feels like you're unique in that you have the personality coming through. It's not just like I have a bunch of mechanical cards that are bound to this character. Uh, there's a lot of personality in those. So that was definitely a big inspiration for yeah. this. I mean, I, I felt that a little bit, like with how unique the mechanics were for each character. I, and so it's really interesting you said that. But then also that one came to mind when you talked about alternate versions of you know uh, these characters, which they did that really well in that game as well. Um, yeah, and it's a very cool concept. I, I like that a lot. Yeah, no, I, I definitely I want to see where this game goes for sure. It, it, in the first expansion, one of the characters is actually like a time traveler that's come back in time to try and prevent some kind of cataclysmic events. So there's definitely like a like a, a a point in the story where we could introduce like, okay, maybe these are characters from that alternate future. Yeah. You know? That's awesome. So what's the expansion timeline going to look like on this? Is this going to follow the expandable card game kind of thing uh, that you guys do where it's going to be like pretty frequent updates or is this uh, just kind of see where it goes? Where are we at with that? 
This will probably be a little bit slower. Um, we've kind of ramped down our expansion process in general. Uh, and that, yeah, that's kind of like a weird like business thing where like we have to ca- try and compare ourselves to other card games and try and see where we belong in the market. So this, uh, the first expansion will be pretty quick. Like we hope the first expansion comes out, I think in November. It's already being like pre-ordered and stuff, and we're going to start preview articles for it soon. So that first one's going to be pretty quick. The second one will probably not be until the first half of next year uh just because of you know different timing and stuff but we're, we're not expecting this to be like a um you know like an right. lcg where like you're getting a new pack every month and the, you know, the meta is shifting in that um it'll probably be a little bit slower at first and we'll just kind of see what the re- the response is to it uh but we, we definitely have plans for a lot of expansions in the future they just might be and it, you know one thing that colby and i decided on as well is that we weren't like for most of our games we do two expansions at a time actually so like whenever you get new ashes decks it's two ashes decks designed to play against each other and then the same for crystal clans every time you get new crystal clans decks we do two, at least two at a time uh the first time we did four because we had so many ready to go uh, but the next two Crystal Clans decks, we do two at a time, and they're designed to kind of play off of each other and also play into the current collection. Uh, but this game, because it's so different in terms of how you put your force together, we didn't want players to have like eight new heroes to draft from yeah. every time we did an update to the game. And we didn't want players to have to feel like they were going to be dropping, you know, a, a lot of cash on this just to add heroes that might not get played that first time around because of how right. drafting works. Uh, so we decided to just do one pack at a time and just put four new characters in each of them. And then, you know, the, we're looking at the possibility of like maybe doing some deluxe expansions down the road where we'll add new location decks as well. So there's a lot of stuff in the pipeline for it. Oh, very cool. I, I just hope that this game gets big enough that we have to have an app someday to randomize our heroes and, uh, <laughs> I'm about you know, it. The, the big geeky box eventually, you know, at some point, right? So, yeah, I'm so into it. Like, uh, I was actually, uh, the Broken Token, their LCG insert fits the base box. And so I picked up one of those and oh, you know, awesome. I've, I've already mapped that. I was like, all right, we can do two expansions before I have to get a second box and still use this insert. <laughs> that's, that's pretty awesome. I, the quality on the cards is great. Um, I think, you know, you guys, uh, are part of the, uh, the Asthma Day brands of awesomeness. Um, so I think that they probably had to do something with that, like that they probably helped with the publishing and things. Uh, but the card quality is really great. The art, I know you guys did in house. You mentioned that a fantastic art on these cards as well. So for this first set, we actually used a combination of artists. Uh, we, we did most of the characters of the single artist and we were actually going to go with him for the remainder of the set, but he had some scheduling conflicts. So we went with Gunship Revolution, which is a uh, like an art studio that you can license out to do your games and stuff. Or not license out, you can contract out to do your games and stuff. They've done a lot of work for us in the past. Like they did uh, some of the uh, Mice and Mystics expansions. Mm. They did uh, Starship Samurai. Um, they, they're very very talented group of artists, and they they always give us amazing work um, for the expansions. And I'm excited for you know players to see this. Uh, you know when we start showing off more art from it. But the expansions are all going to be one single artist that we found specifically to do guardians and who we're working with and you know he's he's very excited about it and he's he's brought some really cool stuff to the characters and you know they're like whenever you change artists there's a little bit of a, a difference versus the art we have for the base game but i certainly don't think it looks like out of place at all he's done a great job matching the style the gunship has uh i think that his stuff looks a little bit more realistic uh and his his uh action scenes tend to be uh a bit bigger in scope so i'm excited to see how people feel about the new art yeah I, and i like the art too that it it definitely has that wink at mercy or whatever character in overwatch, but they're oh, still unique. <laughs> but I mean, they still have unique parts about them, you know, uh, it's not like a complete, just, Oh, what's this rip off game. Um, I, it just, it really is a perfect just tribute to those games. And I, I mean, it's just, uh, really a cool thing. And, and I think you're going to be a big hit with like my son's 15 and he's an overwatch player. And I think that these younger kids are going to be into it. So, uh, he's like, playing guardians with his friends already and teaching them how to play. Awesome. And so it's, it's just a really, really cool game. I think it's just got really, really broad appeal. And the thing Thanks that so I much. think is really great about it too, that, that I think a really one mark of a great game is that you can learn the game in 10 minutes, but then you can play it a hundred times and you're still learning things about it, you know? And so I've not played this one a hundred times by any means, but I'm definitely learning things about it every time. I mean, there's different combinations of characters that just work together differently. um, And just there's new strategies I'm seeing every time I play it. So, I mean, I'm, I'm 10 plus plays into it at this point and 
it's just, I feel like I'm still getting parts of it. So that simple to learn, but impossible to master or difficult to master is definitely present in Guardians. Uh, and that's awesome. usually a sign of a good game to me. So like uh, you, we've, we've talked about Colby a little bit in Summoner Wars. Uh, oh, sorry. I hit the table there. I don't know if that picked oh, up or not. Fine. Um, so we, we talked about Colby a little bit in Summoner Wars. Uh, Colby's a huge, uh, you know, inspiration of mine as far as game design goes. I, I think that Summoner Wars is probably as close as I'll get to playing a, a perfect game in a lot of ways, at least in terms of like the experience that I wanted to get from it. So I really looked to Summoner Wars a lot when we were designing the game to uh, get the inspiration of how the turn structure would work and how approachable everything would be as far as like the actual gameplay was. Uh, and then Colby came in afterwards and like, you know, even clean that up even more so, and, you know, and just added his own insight to make the game as approachable as possible. So I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. I'm glad that, you know, it, it paid off and it, it, you feel like the game's easy to learn and easy to pick up. That's crazy because I see that now that you mentioned it, like Summoner Wars has your little checklist of stuff that happens on a turn and, mm. and so does Guardians. You know what I mean? It's really neat. So. Yeah, it, it was it was definitely like a one for one from that. I was like, I love that system so much. I want to make sure, and like the the you know the faction card that you use in the game, it, it tells you the actions you can do in your turn, and it also tells you like the 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 order in which you do everything in your turn. And I wanted to make sure that was as clear as possible, so players can be like, I, I know exactly what I'm doing right now because it's right here on the card. Well, and then the timing of the different things. The way how the score phase happens, you know, after the action phase, and then you know your ready phase happens before that. Just it clears up. You don't have to have a ton of like flavor text or other like rules text on the cards because the way how the phases time out clears a lot of that stuff up for people too. I think so. That's a pretty good for sure. this game for sure. So, what, Colin, when you're not playing Guardians, what else are you playing? I mean, you mentioned some stuff from from the Mothership Plat Hat there, but what's what's something that you play that hasn't been mentioned yet? Who uh, a lot of Plat Hat for sure. Um, as far as like board games right now, uh, I'm really excited about Key Forge. I'm playing a little sure. bit of that with my friends. Uh, I think I'm, I'm a, a Magic player from back in the day, uh, but I you know I, I can't really keep up with like standard and stuff. So this is definitely something that's on my radar. I'm very very excited about um, the my, my whole studio. Like we've all become obsessed with this game from Osprey Publishing called Gaslands, which is like uh, you take um, what are they like, like uh, hot wheels and uh, matchbox cars and you paint them up and then you put a bunch of like little plastic guns on them and stuff. And then you race them around a track like Mad Max style and blow <laughs> each other up. And it, you know, it's uh it's probably like the easiest miniatures game to get into. And so, you know, Jerry used to play a bunch of like Warhammer and stuff and Colby's never really gotten that much into a, a miniatures game, except for like, I guess, hero escape. So the three of us here in the office have like made a table to play Gaslands on. We've been playing that pretty much every week. So that's been a lot of fun. Yeah. I've seen pictures of people like, like modifying their little Hot Wheels cars. That game looks like a ton of fun, actually. <laughs> it's like, so, I mean, I, I've played a little bit of miniatures games back in the day. I played a lot of uh, War Machine and Hordes from Privateer Press sure. uh, back when it was in its second edition. And that was the first time I ever really got like that minis bug and like where I was like buying terrain and, you know, painting my whole army and <laughs> going to tournaments and stuff. And uh, I loved that. It was a lot of fun. It, in a lot of ways, it felt like an LCG because there was no blind purchasing. You would buy the units that you wanted. And like that game was very combo and card driven. So like it was all about finding synergies between your different abilities and stuff. Uh, so I really enjoyed that, but I haven't really gotten into a miniatures game since then uh, because it, it's a big time investment. And then like, you know, having to reteach myself how to paint and stuff is always kind of a hassle. But the cool thing about Gaslands is that everything is kind of like messy and, you know, it's supposed to look like you've taken these cars and ripped them apart and put them back together. So uh, it's very satisfying to like, paint something really quickly and have it on the table and be like, okay, I'm really satisfied with how this looks. It looks great. And then, you know, the, the game itself was a lot of fun as well. Like rat rod miniature game. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. So this is the part of the show where people have come accustomed to just having us ask just dumb questions and then just seeing how people respond. So I'll start off pretty mild here. Uh, are you a, a hot dog or yeah. hamburger guy? Oh, I actually hate hamburgers. Really? Like, I'm, I'm very anti hamburger and like, it's, it, it causes a lot of personal, you know, struggle, if I'm going to be completely honest. Like, I've lost friends over it. You know, I've, I've, I've been ridiculed for my beliefs, but it is what it is. I just, like, yeah, hamburgers don't really land with me. I love hot dogs, though. Yeah. Uh, I think I might edit a dial tone sound in there, like, I hung up on you. I don't know. Like, just in the interview thing. <laughs> That's understandable. <laughs> so, uh, here, okay, let's, let's ramp it up one here. Pokemon, trading card game, or Yu-Gi-Oh? Um, so... 
the question is 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 it Pokemon like if the video games too or is it just the trading? Ah, uh, let's game? go. Ju- well, let's go just trading card game. I think that the Pokemon trading card game, like as as a game designer, like I am fascinated by the Pokemon trading card game, and I think that it doesn't get enough credit for being a very engaging and very cool system. Like the entire idea of the prize card mechanic, where you basically lose one tenth of your deck and then you have to work to get it back. Yeah. Like that's that's such a cool concept. And then like the the game, you know, when you look at competitive Pokemon decks and the uh, the evolution lines that people have to put in there, and like how they end up putting more copies of certain. Like I I think that the the, the standard is like two three two for a three tier evolution and then like you know of course the meta has you know shifted to where some people won't even use three tier evolutions because it's way easier to get a second card you know than it is to get a second and a third uh so definitely pokemon i don't like Yu Gi Oh at all i'm not a fan of it <laughs> so man again we're best friends um because <laughs> my son was like begging me to play pokemon and like so i bought one of those pre-built like articuno decks and uh this is like maybe a year ago not quite and i was playing against him and i was like Dang, they've done so many cool things with this game since I was a kid with like oh, trainers and just cool stuff. Game. So and like not to not to yuck on anybody's you know preference, but if you look at the opposite, like I have friends who have left Yu Gi Oh because they're just like it's it's the the it hasn't been cultivated the way like a card game should be. Like they have an eternal format and they've let a lot of cards into that format that just have kind of made it very difficult design wise, you know, in order for them to keep consistent in fresh metas. And also I don't like the card size. Like I think that I don't like any game that isn't like standard card size, including mine, which has tarot cards in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so do you get starstruck by any board game people anymore? It's kind of like an issue. Like I'm still very much the, uh, the new guy in the studio when it comes to like, you know, meeting all these people. So, uh, there have been times where Colby's like, Hey, be sure to play it cool when we meet so-and-so. Like, I, I think a good example of this was we, we actually shipped up to Minnesota when we were first acquired by asthma day to go meet with, you know, some of the, uh, the executives and stuff, you know, just to, to get our transition in place and make sure that, you know, everything was smooth and, and we would have a good idea of what it would mean to be part of asthma day. And part of that was, I don't know if you know, but asthma days, uh, asthma day North America is based in Roseville, Minnesota, sure. where fantasy flight used to yeah, be. Yeah. And so they like uh, when uh, Christian Peterson took the executive staff of Fantasy Flight and made it the executive staff basically of Asthma Day, they bought the building across the street and they kept Fantasy Flight where it was. And then Fantasy Flight just became only that studio, whereas, you know, all the production and all the, uh, you know, the, the warehouse and whatnot all went across the street to the Asthma Day building. And that, that's where Asma Day is based for everybody's part of that network. So when we went there, like we got to go to the the Fantasy Flight building as well and meet a bunch of designers there. And like I got to meet Corey Kineska, who's one of my all time favorite designers. You know, I, I got to meet a, a lot of the people that were working with part of the the Arkham LCG team at the time, or all the LCG like all the LCGs have like a little like subsect in the building where like they all work together, and a lot of them like work on two or three of the games. And it was just I was very much starstruck when I got to meet them. It was very cool. Oh yeah. For sure. Uh, Corey's like a legend, man, for sure. <laughs> he's, he's one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life, too. That's great. That's awesome. It's always good to hear good things about people you like look up to, I guess. Yeah, heck yeah. Uh, you know, meeting your heroes so far in board games has been very cool. Like meeting Isaac, meeting Colby, meeting Jerry, and now getting to work with those guys like every day is, is very neat. Yeah. And finding out they're just like regular guys. Like I, my, my story of being stupid is I was doing a live stream and John Gilmore jumped in and like, I just, I mean, he's done plus seven flat hat too, but I just like lost my yeah, mind. He's, like, he's, he's awesome. I, I think he's a great designer and I just kind of lost my mind. I was like, Oh, John Gilmore's in here. John kids on bikes. And look at all these games. I own of yours. Like I was just like such a bad boy. It was embarrassing. <laughs> he's, he's such an impartial guy. I actually like, I make it a priority to try and hop into the uh, infectious play live stream. Uh, a couple times a week whenever they do it because uh, that's a, a great example you know uh every couple of weeks they'll usually play gaslands on there and I've, I've gone in there and watched them play a game of gaslands so it's a lot of overlap there but yeah he's a very nice guy yeah for sure for sure so okay uh let's go with the standard stupid question would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses Oh man, I I don't know. It's tough. I wouldn't want to fight either. I would want to try and befriend them. And if it was going to be between the two, I think I'd try and befriend the the horse sized duck because then that you could just fly around. That on is them, the right? best answer I've ever heard, and I've never even thought of that. And now that you've mentioned that, everyone's answered that question wrong because I mean, you can have a never ending story kind of thing flying around at a duck's back. Like, why exactly. You? That's amazing. I, I want a horse sized loaf of bread, and then we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Best answer ever. Well, great. Uh, anything else you want to mention? Um, when I guess uh, 
look for Guardians at your local shops, but then also you can find it at Plaid Hat's website. Um, maybe not quite yet. Is it shipping yet? Um, I'd have to double check. It, it is in stores locally, uh, at, at least as far as, you know, people that have the, you know, Asthma Day distributor accounts all set up and everything. Uh, I've, I've seen it in stores already. Uh, it should be, it, I think that if you click on our store, it still uh, diverts you to late pre-orders, but that's, don't worry about that. It, they'll, they'll send it right away. So yes, it is available now from platagames.com and from local retailers. Fantastic. And I definitely think this one's worth the pickup. Uh, a real good game. Really enjoyed it. Thanks for your time, Colin. I uh, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Take care. So that was that was some information about Guardians. I think it's a pretty good price point. You don't get a ton of cards in the box, but I'm positive they're going to have just a ton of stuff coming out for this one. Um, and this one, to me, honestly, it it feels really good. Um, um, I don't know. Like I think I I like it better than Crystal Clans. I don't know if I like it better than Summoner Wars, but boy, is Plat Hat good at putting out these like card games where you're trying to do controlling an area kind of thing. Um, just really a good game. Such a solid design, and I. I I can't believe this is his really his first major published, you know, design that he's had. So, uh, just a good game, really good quality of the car on the cards, uh, just nice art, just everything's great on it. Just what you come to expect from Plat Hat, who just has so many cool games that they do. And I just, I love how quirky this company is. They're the ones that are going to put the games out that are just kind of a little off the wall, like, you know, Mice and Mystics and um, Stuff Fables and just stuff like that. So, um, and now now Guardians and Crystal Clans and just all these really cool, just kind of unique games that aren't your your typical Euro games, but aren't just a don't think Chuck Dice kind of a Meritrash game either. So, um, I don't know, just a good balance of adventure and, and st- strategic gameplay uh, in all those games. And this one's no exception. So, really look forward to seeing what the community has to say about this one. Um, I'm excited to get it to the table with some of my LCG players and they'll, I mean, they'll destroy me because there's a lot of stuff that I'm not figuring out in this game yet, but it looks like it's a lot of fun. I know we're all excited for Keyforge. This is something that may hold us over for a little bit or I don't know, man. It's, it's pretty awesome. It might, I don't know. I had to play Keyforge. So we'll see. Yeah. This is true confessions time for me. Um, uh, I've never played a plaid hat game. So yeah, I'm glad you did this interview because I would have had much to add. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, I I was just thinking about it. I was I was talking to Kim about it this week, and I was like, I don't think I've ever played any of their games. Like, Dead of Winter is theirs, right? Yep. Yeah, I haven't played that. They also have Ashes. Yep. I haven't played that. I haven't played either of the games that you said, Classic Clash of the Clans or whatever, or Guardians. But Guardians does look amazing. Like, I saw the box art, and that looks pretty slick, so... Yeah, I, I would definitely give that a try if it's similar to Smash Up. So I kind of dig my Smash Up. So if it makes it a little gamery, that would be it, cool. It's it's a cooler version of uh, it's a cooler version of of Smash Up for sure. I think you'd like it a lot, uh, Jason. So the games that, that I own per- currently from Plat Hat. So people want to say we have like little like it's too similar to taste or whatever. Jason's never played a Plat Hat game. I own Ashes. I own Dead of Winter. I own Guardians. I own Mice and Mystics. I own Tail Feathers. And I own Specter Ops. So all those, and Summoner Wars. I own every possible Summoner Wars card. So all of those games are Plat Hat games that Jason has never played and I love. And they're in my top 200 for sure. So there, take that. Yeah. And all those games are games that I have looked at and thought, eh, that looks okay. And then I moved on. <laughs> Spectre Ops is really good too. Um, that one, that one does seem kind of cool. That's a one versus many game, right? Yep, it is. Yeah, um, that one looks like, cool. It's like hide and seek in the dystopian factory of the future. I don't know. I I really want to play Raxin, but I just can't get a darn invitation to play it. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, that was a that was an awesome marketing cap- campaign, though. It was like it totally capitalized on FOMO. It's like, hey. Here's a game that is uh, pretty squarely mediocre, but you can't have it unless your friends do. <laughs> yep. And we're going to charge you $50 for it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that was super clever. Like, it if really that was. Helped, if that helped fund other games that are more awesome, then cool. Um, and then, you know what? I was kind of bummed when Plaid Hat was like, when they leaned into the Asthma Day uh, umbrella. But I think this is one company that's been able to really keep their personality and they've fixed a lot of their distribution issues. So I think that they, 
they've been able to get these games out more places and been able to get their printing done much quicker. So I know there were times where Mice and Mystics, for example, would go out of print for a long period of time. And I, I think it drops out of print like for a little bit of time at a, at a spell, but it's always back in print real quick. So um, I don't know, man. It's they're a good company, and I was really excited to have them so eager to to connect with us. And I do I don't want to make any promises, but I think we'll be able to get Isaac Vega on here in the future, who's got a what is it, Starship Samurais? Um, yep. is kind of his new game, and then yeah. also Ashes, and he was involved with. I mean, pretty much everything Plat Hat does, he's involved with. So, um, pretty pretty awesome. I'd love to get him on. So we'll see. Um, but cool. That's about it, guys. Yep. I've been yep. Joel, and I am Jason, and keep keep ga- keep <laughs> gaming. <laughs> that was terrible. I mean, I don't think I think it was just you know campy and cheesy. I mean, it just happened to work last time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> They have a bumblebee as a mascot. I don't know. <laughs> a wasp. He's like a hornet, I guess, but still. Yeah, it's a hornet, yeah. It could just be like a guy in a blue jacket costume, but I guess that's too easy. Well, they've got a couple of those guys manning the cannons, but I mean, like, seriously, I think they were like, for the kids. we got to put this guy for the... Let's make a real creepy bug mascot for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. I really do love that team, but... <laughs> <laughs> Their mascot game is not strong. <laughs> no, it really isn't. It's been a bad week for Ohio sports. Yes. My Purdue fans make sure to let me know that like every day. <laughs> yep. Well, anyway, that was a deep cut for those people who who uh, pay attention to things other than the board game. So I'm definitely cutting that out of the podcast. But anyway, <laughs> thanks for the news, Jason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>